A la resta dels convidats, let's uh, now open uh, the debate to also the rest of our guests. Uh, because uh, as an initial uh, question, do we really need an army uh, in the 21st century, Mrs. Kelly? I think more than ever, especially now that uh, we have also common enemies and these enemies face no borders. It's uh, now more than ever that we actually need to protect our member states and our alliance. So just a few days ago, the same day that of the anniversary of the attack in Brussels, we had an attack in London. Um, so besides the Brexit, you understand that it's really important not only to enhance our alliance with NATO, but also to have a European defence strategy, uh, because our borders are not easy to guard and the burden has to be equally shared. Also, I come from a Mediterranean country like you, so you understand how difficult it will be the next years and when the demographics will change with our neighbouring countries to be able to protect um, um, our borders and to make our citizens feel safe. But of course this means in many levels, a like coordination to try to be complementary, uh, but also um, to be able to provide a common uh, a common policy of defence, because we didn't have that until now. We had some kind of coordination. And exchange of information, of course. If this doesn't happen, you see how difficult it is, even in one country, to exchange information with a neighbouring country. This could be extremely important. Mm -hmm. What about Malta? Because and strengthening the European Union. Uh, Eva Kaili. Well, um, I will agree. I will say that First of all, we have 22 member states being also members of the NATO alliance. Exactly. So this means we're not all from the European Union. Secondly, this discussion started basically after the Brexit, uh, after the results of the referendum, because we lost almost one-fourth, one-fifth of our um, allies on defence and military uh, operations. So this means we really felt the need to... Uh, well. It was just not true. I, I it, it's it's statements. an important um, uh, force. This has been going on for UK. years, Eva. I agree, but 1998. It's, it's, uh, the, the, the main Prime discussion Minister. and decision took place three, four months ago. No. So the main decision. They for... saw an opportunity. Hey? Now that the UK wasn't there. You can phrase there. it as you want. Ah, but they because they yeah. saw an opportunity because the UK wasn't there the UK didn't to want guide them in a more common yeah. sense way. And uh, common and uh, European policies. This is well known. Uh, but I. Uh, I do believe that we need it, so the rest of us, and also the countries that were closer to the borders. And there is a concern because we have an aggressive narrative sometimes from Turkey, and Turkey is an ally in NATO. Mm -hmm. So you understand sometimes if you are in an alliance, but that does not guarantee the borders inside the alliance, this has to be covered somehow. So no, I didn't say we shouldn't have a national army. I said we should better add our forces and have a coordination, especially for our defence. So I didn't even say operations. But I do believe that we shouldn't take anything for granted. We have to protect our citizens and make them feel safe. And this doesn't mean even that you have to spend a huge amount of money because you already spend them, but you have to coordinate it you better. You do that through NATO. I mean, it, you're deluding your citizens. They are not all the member states of the Union, members of NATO. But uh, well, what about it? Uh, there is uh, they, they, a lot of... of and as I said, Turkey is a member of NATO. Yes, so are you... So are I'm you, from Greece. Eva, are you <laughs> suggesting... Are you suggesting, then, that you could foresee a time when the European Union would galvanise the armed forces in Europe in order to have an armed conflict with Turkey? I say that we need to protect our citizens and make them feel no, safe no, 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 in no. any case scenario. And, of course, I say that but it's already started an initiative to enhance and uh, enforce the European Defence Agency with a bigger budget. It was, it was you're, 20 million you're to 100 avoiding million the million question. to operate. I didn't say we need a war. I said we have ah. to avoid a war. But you, that's this why you have the allies in, in NATO. But if something happens well, between well, allies, happen. you need... So you prefer to be a member of NATO EU alliance. Member. I'm still in Europe, so for my union, <laughs> the European <laughs> Union, we actually think, and there is a decision in, among the big parties, to move forward with this decision. I understand you disagree, but, but uh, let's this is just some the case. Some here in Brussels are saying that uh, with Donald Trump in the White House, especially 
say, being a... Let me ask you a question, because uh, this is obviously a Catalan uh, TV show, and as you know, in Catalonia we are living a very intense uh, political uh, mo moment uh, with uh, the call for independence uh, from the government and uh, the, the call for a referendum. Uh, do you think if the Catalan situation could become a security risk for Europe, in the sense that if Catalonia declares independence uh, and it's maybe or maybe not expelled from the EU. We have a very 7 million country, uh, inhabitants country in the middle of the Mediterranean. Uh, can this become a security concern for NATO, for example, for, for other allies? Of course not. It's just an internal question for Iberia, let's put it this way. And I can't see that that could develop into some kind of war. Not God war, forbid. but... Mm -hmm. uh, we talk, when you talk about defence, you talk about war. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Terrorism is a different concept. It's a different kind of security no, problem. Defense is so, not war. Defense is being avoided. Why well, do you war. mention Turkey attacking? It's Greece. avoiding war. Well, defense is no, it's not defense. causing. It's avoiding. You defend. Well, it's that's the to attack. avoid. No, no, no. You defense don't. Is you to don't attack? defend by you defend having really? tanks. You, defend you have. You have to have attack. the capability to attack and to coordinate your attacks it's in an alliance. Prevention. But that's prevention. got nothing that's to do. Terrorist. But that's got nothing to do with internal security. It's got nothing to do with internal security. So basically, uh, unfortunately, the Catalan situation, if it goes, it boils over, I hope not, because I think there should be and there could be reasoned ways of moving forward, mm -hmm. both from the Catalan point of view <coughs> and from the Spanish point of view. But if there's something like that develops, it would, could develop, unfortunately, into something like the Northern Ireland situation in the past. And that is, of course, an army question, but I wouldn't want the European army, if it ever exists, to involve itself in that kind of problem. But I was not uh, obviously uh, uh, suggesting a war, but a, a security gap in the middle of the Mediterranean, the fact that uh, a government that may or may not be recognized by other European allies. Uh, well, I think any instability inside the European Union uh, can cause problems, but this, uh, uh, because it's not exactly the borders of EU, so I don't think there will be a security problem. But instability is something we would, of course, everybody would like to avoid, especially in an alliance that has provided peace in the European Union for uh, uh, decades now. So uh, I, I hope that this will not be the case. And also I do believe that inside the Union you can find ways to keep the balance. I, I don't want to interfere in, the internal, uh, in this internal issue because it's very sensitive, but after having the Brexit and what's happening with uh, Scotland, I think maybe there is time for a, a more mature con uh, conversation and discussion uh, inside Spain on that, because there are many things that we can work better together than apart. So I do hope that this will uh, uh, remain at least uh, uh, on terms of... Um, of, of the referendum on the table for a mature discussion because one thing I've realized uh, having coming from a country that faced the crisis the last years for many years is that a referendum the only thing that um, is uh, achieving is dividing the society because from its nature is dividing people to yes or no so I do hope that we are ready for a more mature discussion on many problems and try to find different solutions in the UK you had two referendums, not The only. issue of defence and uh, foreign uh, security policy. This is uh, the case. That's the difference between being isolated from the rest of the world or being part of a bigger community. And uh, I think there's people in my country, in Catalonia, that they fail to recognise that being an independent country, it means something else than just being an independent country. It means being, uh, expressing your solidarity with your neighbours. And our neighbours is essentially Europe and the Mediterranean countries. Well, uh, so let's see how it all uh, evolves and uh, if we end up seeing a European army or not, the, or in an independent Catalonia or not. <laughs> let, let me just say yes. one more thing. Uh, the last 10 years before the crisis in Greece, our uh, expenditure on armaments reached almost 10 billion per year. Now it's reduced to almost 2, 3. You understand the burden 
of being at the borders and in a crossroad mm -hmm. that is uh, outside, uh, close to the borders of EU, of course, the external borders of EU. Um, I think it's extremely important to understand also that we have to work together on that and not to uh, let the burden in some countries. And uh, also because, I, as I said, I don't want to intervene. I, I just wanted to say about the referendum that sometimes people, when if there's not a mature conversation, they give an answer to a different question that they believe. They give a no sometimes to different questions that they believe they give this answer. So this is what our experience says. Sometimes they say no to the political system. Well, in Catalonia no right now, the they, they do not allow even to hold a referendum. So we are even in the previous... Uh, but, that's true. But,